Hey, what's up guys? Sloth King here. Today I'm going to be working on my 08 Forerunner and I'm going to be replacing my wheel bearings and my CV axles. I discovered that the cause of that uh, squealing sound from my front end is actually my wheel bearings. I thought it was um, my brake pads, but it turns out that it was the wheel bearings. I found out because I went through, replaced the calipers again. I thought it was like a stuck caliper. And then I heard it when I was driving down the road doing a test drive. So I put both windows down and the passenger side was worse. I took a, a hard right turn and the squeal went away. I was like, oh, great. So I turned hard left and then the squeal was very prominent. So that indicates that it's a wheel bearing. So yeah, I'm gonna be doing that. I'm gonna go ahead and jack up the Forerunner, get it on the jack stands and get the tires off and then we shall begin. All right, I got my wheels off. And then I just opened my boxes. Here's my hubs and then here's my CV axles. These are the upgraded uh, Cardone ones. These are the heavy duty ones. They have uh, better um, boots that aren't, I forget what, the, what they're made of. They're made of some type of uh, plastic instead of neoprene. So they won't rip as easily, which is great. I figured since I'm replacing the wheel hub, my boot on my CV axle is ripped and it's not much more to just replace the whole thing. This is the wheel bearing and hub assembly. All right, I'm gonna slap you guys on my head and then we're gonna, we're gonna take off the caliper. You gotta take off your, uh, you gotta take off your brake pads. So you gotta take this pin out. Then there's a little clip right here for the brake line. You're gonna pop that out and it's gonna let it come through and then I'm just gonna dangle it on the frame. And then all there is is two bolts, one here and one there. And then the caliper comes right off and then you can take off your rotor. All right, let's do this. Oh, careful. Let's get our bungee cord or a coat hanger, or whatever you have, get it ready. You're gonna hold the caliper and then uh, just take it off the rest of the way. Okay, I'm gonna hold the caliper. Actually, my rotor can come off right now, which is great. It's not stuck on there. Oh, I'm dumb. So, take off this nut or this bolt right here. Ugh. All right, so if you take out this bolt, it'll allow the brake line bracket to move. I don't know why I thought didn't think about that until right now. So I'm gonna just put my bungee cord through here and then I'll probably just put it on the spring on the shock. It's out of the way, perfect. All right, next thing to do, we're going to pop off this dust cover. So there's a couple different ways to do this. You can hit the side of it, dent it in so that way you can push it out but don't puncture it. If you have like a small enough pry bar, you might be able to fit that in there. No, let me grab a screwdriver. All right, so I don't know what happened to my sacrificial screwdriver. So I'm just gonna be careful with this one. I'm just going to hit it in between there and that's really not working. Okay, so I have a dull chisel. All I'm going to do is hit it on the side here a few times. Dent it in and then I'm going to hit it out. All right, you see it popping out. There we go. Nothing was punctured, which is great. Okay, next thing we're going to do, I'm going to take off this cotter pin. Just going to bend it out. 
I think the kit, double check your kit for your wheel bearing. Okay, perfect. This has a new cutter pin in it. That's huge. Holy crap. I don't think this one, oh, this one comes with it too. Perfect. So now I know if I wanted to, I can cut it. It's highly recommended that you replace it, but if you're in a pinch and you can't, you can reuse it as long as you don't tear it up. I'm just going to cut mine off because it's a, uh, or maybe I can actually grip it better coming through. Yep. Wow. All right, you're gonna need a 36 millimeter socket. Honestly, I think it might be a 35. Oh well. We'll see if that, uh, if it works. Your wheel is definitely going to spin. We don't want that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put two studs on, or two lug nuts on the studs. One here and one here. Then I'm going to take my pry bar, put them right in between. Oh, wow. Hmm. Okay, so if you don't have a breaker bar long enough, you can just use the end of a jack handle, put your brake bar in there, put it up against the ground, and then we can just loosen this thing up. Ah. Ah. Wow, that's really, uh, that's really on there. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, so since I don't have all the time in the world, I'm just gonna use my impact. And yes, I know, I'm not supposed to use a chrome socket on here, but the store did not have an impact grade one. So, let's do this. Perfect. We want it flush because we're going to be hitting this in to move the axle through. Now, I'm sure I, I could have gotten this uh, broken loose. I've done stuff like that before, but I just want to make it easy on myself. So next, what we're going to do, you can either hit this right there, dead center, to move the axle through, or if you have a punch, you can put the punch right in the middle, hit the punch, like that. Two hours later. You can see it moving in. It's a slow process, but it can be done. There we go. Next, I'm going to take the, the hub off. Yep, so you have a 17 millimeter. You're gonna have four bolts, one, two, three, and then four. Easiest thing to do, put your wrench on there, grab your rubber hammer, because you don't want to damage your tool, and just hit it. Okay, that's loose. All right, not, not sure why I didn't think of it till right now, but this has a bunch of brake dust on it, so just take some brake parts cleaner and spray it on there. You don't want to breathe in that uh, that brake dust that comes off. But if you don't have any, you can uh, just wear a mask. Now, you have a couple options. You can try pulling on it. Sometimes they come out like this. This is actually coming out pretty easy. So. Uh, the reason, oh, and by the way, the reason why you don't want to take this nut off is because if you're pulling on it or hammering it out, you don't want the hub just flying at you. So this is coming out pretty easy, but let me show you a different way. All right, so you can take your rubber hammer and just hit it left, hit it right, down, up, while you're pulling on it. And then it will eventually come out. Okay, now we're at the point where we can loosen the bolts some more. And then we can now take off this axle nut. And then just pull this out. Perfect. So when you take off your dust cover, keep it in the orientation on the ground. And then this seal, it's done its job. It's not, uh, not rusty on the inside. 
actually looks pretty good. So the seal wasn't compromised. I just think the bearing got old. If you're just replacing the hub, this is all you have to do. You can clean the surface with a brush. There's a wire brush. Go ahead and clean up the surface really good. Try not to get any dust in there or dirt, but if you do, that's okay. You can just spray it out afterwards. And then if there's like any rust on the inside, you can just take your wire brush, go in. Like I'm going to hit this lip right here. And then you can spray it out with some brake cleaner, wipe it out really good, and then put some anti-seize on here and then just reassemble everything. But if you're doing what I'm doing, replacing the CV axle, the next thing we have to do, we have to take out these two bolts here and then your lower ball joint bolt. So these two bolts down here are 19 millimeters. Down here on the ball joint, you're gonna have a, another cotter pin. I'm going to undo this cotter pin. Sorry, it's kind of hard to see. Okay. That cotter pins out. For the ball joint itself, you're gonna need a 24 millimeter socket. So let's go ahead and break those loose. All right, let's go ahead and break these off. Okay. Now let's do the ball joint. Ugh. Wow, that's really on there. All right. That was really stuck on there. Wow. Let's finish taking these two off. Now we have just enough room to get that out. Perfect. The seal is still good, which is great. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, we're going to take our pry bar. We're gonna go underneath the car. So there's little notches on that axle that we're going to hit, which is right, right there. I'm going to put a pry bar right there and just hit it. So there's an access panel right here for your uh, oil pan. And as you can see, I'm putting the pry bar right on one of those notches. And I'm just gonna keep hitting it from back here. And then make sure you have a pan ready because some differential fluid is going to come out. As you can see, it's slowly starting to come out. We're gonna keep hitting it until it just falls out. Now it should be at the point where uh, I can just pull on it and it should come right out. Here we go. And put your catch pan right over there because some differential fluid is going to come out. As you can see, it's leaking out right there. And I'm going to wipe it up and then put the new one in. Okay, now the next thing you want to do really quick is take your hammer and just hammer it in because it is still leaking pretty bad. This up out of the way, get it lined up straight. Should have taken this bag off, but I am losing a lot of differential fluid right now. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> uh. 
Okay, it's finally in. That took a minute. It would not want to line up. Now I'm uh, going to be pretty low on diff fluid, which should be okay since I don't use the front wheel drive at the moment. So now what you're going to do, line this back up. So we're going to put these two bolts on. Now I highly recommend to get some um, thread locker. Now all I have is blue. I don't know what happened to my red. Uh, you want to use red on suspension stuff, but I mean, since I can't go anywhere, I have no choice but to use this blue one. It's all right. Some thread locker is better than none. I'm going to use a little extra blue since it's uh, not as strong. Okay, so these two nuts get torqued down to 103 foot-pounds. Now we're going to tighten this bottom ball joint. This is going to get torqued to 112 foot-pounds. Okay, that's done. And then we're going to add that cotter pin in there. Now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna clean this out. Now that's all clean. We're going to make sure the backside of here is all clean as well. Now we're gonna take the new wheel seal we're going to open this whole thing up. I've been bearing a sample. Oh, this comes with the, oh wow, okay. That's awesome, it comes with the new uh, seal on the back. Sweet. I guess I should have opened that up beforehand. Okay, now with that, uh, we gotta undo our lower ball joint. Okay, take that seal off, remember how it went on. Put the new one on. Now before we go through the trouble of putting the new one on, I'm just gonna take my brass wire brush just clean up the surface slide this back in I'm just gonna pull on it a little bit oh i forgot the number one thing that we need to do with the seal just lube it a little bit okay so i have some assembly lube you can also use lithium grease i'm going to pop that back out bring it all around the edge so that way the seal does not rip as it goes in Put some assembly lube in here. Makes the wheel bearing go on a lot easier. You're gonna have one seal here. Throw on your dust shield. Before assembly, throw some anti-seize on this. That'll just make it easier to take off in the future. Wipe off the bearing. Make sure it's nice and clean. And then we're gonna install it. Get all of your bolts started. And then take your wrench, go in a crisscross pattern. So tighten this down, tighten this one down, hit this one, and then go back to this one. It'll ensure that the wheel bearing goes in straight. I don't have a crow's foot attachment for my torque wrench. So I can't torque it down, but what are you gonna do? You're gonna grab your hammer, just put your wrench on it, and uh, get it to the point where it's like pretty snug on there. Do one more pass, there we go. That's all done. Last thing to do, throw on the axle nut. Now we're gonna throw two of the lug nuts on. And then this axle nut, uh, I looked it up. It says it gets torqued to, I think 176 foot pounds. Okay, it says 203 foot pounds. That's a lot. That's torqued. Go ahead, put this on. All right, put that retainer on. And then uh, I'm gonna see if this big one fits. Because if it does, I'm gonna use a small one for the ball joint below. Now bend this back. There we 
Where's that? Hit that. There we go. That's not gonna come out. Last thing to do, take your brush, go around the edge. Go ahead, line it up. And just hammer it on. And just take your punch and just tap that metal back in. Wipe off the rotor just in case if you have any grease on it. Before you tighten that down, go ahead and throw your bracket back on. All right, your caliper bolts get torqued down to 65 foot-pounds. There we go. And after that, go ahead and uh, put your clip back in and throw your brake pads back in. Remember the one with the wear indicator goes on the inside. Go ahead and pop your, uh, your clips in place. Make sure these little ears right here sit on top of the brake pad. Last but not least, put these little clips back in. You can go ahead and do the other side and then top off your front differential and then afterwards throw your wheel on and then torque it to, I think it's 83 foot pounds or 82 foot pounds and then you're done. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do the driver's side and then it'll be done. It's the same exact procedure, just on the opposite side. All right guys, it is the next day and uh, it got really dark last night so I couldn't film, but I got the driver's side done and uh, I took it for a test drive and everything worked out really well. There's no more squealing. Hopefully this helped you guys if you guys need to do wheel bearings and or CV axles. So yeah, if you liked the video, go ahead and leave a like. Subscribe to see more videos like these. Peace. Ah, <sighs> oh, f***ing A. I discovered that uh, the, the, uh,